Hi there folks, welcome to this week's weekly Forex forecast, Monday the 24th of January. Now in order to get this weekly Forex forecast, head over to the forexsignals.com website, scroll right down to the bottom, here you'll see all our free bells and whistles, all our tools that we offer absolutely free. You've got the profit calculator in there, you've got the, uh, the currency heat map, pivot calculators and so forth. Over here, you'll see a, a button that says Forex Forecast. A click on that, pulls up the Forex Forecast uh, menu page. Leave your details in there. That way, you'll be notified the moment the uh, Forex Forecast has been released. It'll be sent directly to your email inbox. We won't spam you. We won't sell your email on. So do that. You get the uh, Forex Forecast the moment it has been released. Or, of course, you can just watch it here by heading over to the site. Right, let's have a look then what's going on uh, this week. Max has got his eye on gold. Gold has been in a range for a period of time, edging up, but it's pretty much in a tight range. There's two possible scenarios when you're in range. Possible a breakout to the upside or possible breakout to the downside when indeed a breakout happens. And he reviews both scenarios there with a bullish bias. Um, which I actually would agree with on that, on a fundamental view. I'm looking for gold to maybe edge higher, risk off and so forth, and also the inflation hitch. Max is also looking at the tech stocks. He's eyeing here the Fed meeting later on in the week and how that can impact uh, the tech stocks, which, as you may know, have been on a down path at the moment. Again, a lot of markets, uh, risk money is coming out of the markets. All the indices are under pressure, the S&P 500, the, the Dow, and indeed the tech stocks have been worst affected. So he's viewing that path of least resistance to the downside once we have a breakout. I'm looking at an Aussie yen trade as well. This is a, a classic case of risk off. What do I mean by risk off? It basically means when the big money basically are taking less risk with their money. And uh, with that, they basically pull their money out of the stock markets. And that has knock-on effects into the currency markets as well. In particular, the Japanese yen basically tends to trade higher when the markets become more defensive, becoming risk off. And that's exactly what's happening at the moment. The Aussie yen is trading higher, so is the Swiss franc. Both of those are low-yielding currencies. They are the funding currencies. And money gets repatriated into those uh, when people take money off the risk assets. More about that when we get on to the screens in a moment. So we're looking at an Aussie yen trade uh, to the downside. So quite a busy week this week. Lots of central bank rate decisions. Again, we'll look at the economic calendar uh, this week as well. But also, more importantly, we've got the uh, Ukraine-Russia conflict or potential conflict um, on the eyes of a lot of investors out there, a lot of investment banks. So that is some, something to certainly keep an eye on, could drive the markets, could be decisive in where markets head uh, this week. Right, now let's jump on to the screens and see exactly what this week has in store. Come on. OK, so let's start off by looking at my momentum meter. Now, as I say each and every week, this does not predict the future, but it does tell you exactly where the money is flowing at this moment in time. Now, as you may know, I am a trend follower. And what I'm trying to do is get onto a trend and I want to have a slight edge. Trading is all about having an edge in the markets. Now, the edge that I have is basically to buy a strong currency and to sell a weak currency. It doesn't mean it's going to be that way going forward, but at the moment in time, that is where I want to get involved in. A strong currency pushing up and a selling a weak currency that's pushing lower. That, to me, is a trading edge. Why would I want to be trading two currencies that are both being strong across the basket? Why would I want to get involved in a currency um, pair that's basically got both currencies heading in the same direction? That is not an edge. So using this momentum meter does give me that edge. Now, you can see here on the four hour chart, I can toggle between different time frames, of course, on this. You see here on the four hour chart, I can see quite a lot on this. Um, I can see here this brown and this red line. These are the strong currencies at the moment. This is the Japanese yen. This is the Swiss franc. These currency pairs, as you can see by the trajectory of the lines, have been, being, have been getting stronger and stronger. These are being bought. Now, as a trend follower, I want to buy the strong currencies. I'm going to be buying these currencies and I'm going to be selling these currencies, these currencies that are heading down. And you see here the currencies that are heading down are the Australian dollar, this orange line. You've got the Canadian dollar. It's coming back from the recent gains that we've said. That's a commodity currency. British pound is coming down and the New Zealand coming down as well. So these are the currencies that are starting this week um, under pressure. And of course, 
uh, if you want to have an edge in the market, you sell the currencies that are under pressure. Why are the yen, the Swiss franc, um, uh, so strong? Well, they're safe haven currencies. The market is kicking this week off in risk off because of the Ukraine and so forth. So the funding currencies, the low yielding currencies, they perform better um, in this type of environment. Let's have a quick look now at my trade pick for the week. It's the Aussie against the Japanese yen. OK, so this is the four hour chart and the Australian dollar against the Japanese yen. You see, price has been in a descending channel. I've depicted those with these uh, channel uh, lines in here at the moment. We'd be making a series of lower highs and lower lows as we trend lower. Now this level up here around the 82 sort of uh, 20 to 82 50 zone. This has been acting as a support zone, an area of demand. Now you see we bounced off it a couple of times here on the four hour chart. It was acting as resistance uh, previously back at the uh, middle of December. We've now we've broken through. We've taken out this major, major level. Often these levels act in reverse on the way up. So support will become resistance and resistance will become support. The path of least resistance now is uh, of least resistance is now clearly to the downside. We've broken through the channel uh, base of this descending channel. The moving averages, I'd love to look at the moving averages. If they're fanned out, it shows you a good trend is in play. The next move down here, the next support zone I'm looking at basically comes in around the 80-20 level. Of course, we're going to have pullbacks along the way. My trend bias this week is for this to trade lower and I'll be getting into this currency pair um, on pullbacks on the lower time frame charts. And I got that clue there from the momentum meter. So Aussie yen is a market that maybe will trend lower this week. And again, this is all to do with a risk on and risk off. Just look at the stock markets. OK, so this is the S&P 500. Looks familiar, doesn't it? Looks very much like the Aussie yen currency uh, pair chart we looked at a moment ago. So the top 500 companies in the US put into this index. It's called the S&P 500. We've broken through key level of support in here around the 4,500 uh, level. Now the path of least resistance is lower. Let's scrunch this up a little bit, see where the next support zone is. Well, I think we've got support coming in potentially around the 4,300 level. But again, this is a consequence of the issues going on with Ukraine and Russia and so forth. So the markets are going into risk off defensive money. Risk traders are taking the money out of the stock market and that has knock on effects as you've seen in the currency markets um, as well. So keep an eye this week, especially uh, on what's going on in those um, in, the, in the Russia and Ukraine. Keep an eye on the stock market. That could give you an indication whether risk off is going to continue this week. If it does indeed, then you can look to buy the, um, the safe haven currencies, the yen, the Swiss, and look to sell those commodity currencies, the high beta, high interest rate currencies. Let's now have a look at the economic calendar for the week ahead. OK, so in order to get this, head over to the ForexSignals.com's website. Uh, scroll right down to the bottom. Here's where you'll see all our bells and whistles. Um, that's where you get uh, to see our Forex forecast that I mentioned um, a moment ago. You've got lots of size calculator, pivot point calculators. Just click on the Forex economic calendar. Absolutely free. Um, and you can view calendar. And it basically shows you everything that's coming out uh, for the week ahead. I like to look at the next seven days as well when I'm planning my trading week. OK, so let's start off by looking at today, the uh, 24th of January. Uh, today, we've had some high impact data out in the form of PMI data. And you can see that because it's uh, coded red here on the right hand side. Anything that's red is high impact. Anything that's green is low and uh, medium is deemed uh, is, is yellow. PMI data stands for Purchasing Managers Index. Now, it's a forward-looking indicator. Central bankers love forward-looking indicators, especially PMI. It's basically a survey from all the business leaders and different sectors um, gauging how confident they are about the economy going forward. Of course, if they're confident, they employ more staff, they increase wages, they invest more money in plant, machinery, raw materials and so forth. So it's a good sort of forward-looking economic indicator. Anything above 50 is deemed to be an economy that's uh, uh, expanding. Anything below 50 is deemed to be an economy that is contracting. And you see these came in slightly less than expected here in the UK. Maybe a reason why the pound is under a bit of pressure this morning. Um, so that could be an effect of that. Just scrolling through uh, for the rest of the week. Let's have a look here. What have we got out tomorrow? Not a lot. We've got Australian Day in 
in Oz. We've got some housing data in the US. Housing data is normally keenly looked at as well, not really graded as a high impact, put it down as medium impact. Quite like housing, certainly people are only buying new houses and so forth and investing in new homes if they're confident about their jobs and so forth. Um, and of course, we've got uh, uh, we've got um, trade data out of New Zealand. Uh, now let's scroll out for the next seven days. OK, so here you see on Wednesday midweek, we've got the Bank of Canada rate decision. Uh, key event of the week. Central banks, they meet once a month to decide on interest rates. That's why we trade the currency markets to basically uh, take uh, uh, trades on where interest rates are going. If interest rates are going up, so should the currency follow. So markets, certainly the forex market, pay keen attention to these uh, rate announcements. Unlikely that they will be moving interest rates. You can see here the estimate um, uh, last time out was 0.25. That's basically where rates are at the moment. They're expecting uh, 0.25 as well. You can look up and see where they're expecting. If it comes in differently, that's normally when markets move. So they're not expecting much um, in the way of um, moving interest rates. But as with all these central bankers, it's the follow on statement, the policy report that we have to pay attention to, because that's when we get clues on what the central bank is doing. You know, they're all very, very um, keen on all this forward guidance at the moment. They don't want to surprise the markets unless you're the um, Reserve Bank of New Zealand. Um, but they don't normally want to surprise the markets. Um, so they gave us forward guidance. So we pay attention to that. And also on the 26th, we've got the FOMC. Um, big, big uh, FOMC. Again, uh, not expecting to move rates uh, this time. Although the next meeting, they are expecting to move rates. But again, the press conference is very, very important. Um, you know, last uh, time out, they were pretty hawkish. They've eased back on their asset buying. Uh, which is basically upward pressure on interest rates. It'd be interesting to see their stance now. Um, are they still going to be, um, you know, hawkish? That basically means upward pressure on interest rates going into this year. So the dollar should react. Having said that, the dollar is pretty much pricing in uh, rate hikes this year. I think we're pricing in uh, three rate hikes. I think even Jamie Dimon from uh, JP Morgan, I think he put out something last week, six hikes this year. I don't know about that, but, um, but uh, there you go. Um, although he does think Bitcoin is a um, is old, a load of old nonsense and Bitcoin's under pressure this week, certainly. All right, CPI is coming out um, as well. Uh, we've got CPI out of New Zealand, inflation numbers. We always pay attention to inflation numbers. Uh, scrolling on through, uh, GDP out of the US. Again, high impact news. Um, basically, uh, the wealth of the economy. Uh, we've got home sales data again. A lot of home sales, durable goods. Durable goods, that's your, like your white goods. You know, people are only investing in new washing machines and tumble dryers if they're confident about their jobs and so forth. Like an early indication of where inflation is going. Uh, so that's why we look at these uh, data releases that are coming out. Uh, so that's basically about it for the week. Uh, you've got some industrial confidence surveys out of the, the Eurozone later on in the week. Uh, but as I say, even if you don't trade these data releases, it's really important that you know what's going on. Um, a, to keep you out of trouble. And B, you might want to make some money out of some of the volatile moves that these data releases can often lead to. OK, well, that's the economic calendar for the week ahead. Quite a busy week. OK, so I hope you found that useful. Don't forget, if you want to get this weekly Forex forecast directly to your inbox, just head over to the ForexSignals.com. Uh, website, fill in your details there. We sent to you directly the moment it has been released. Don't forget uh, to subscribe to the channel if you don't already do so here. Hit that bell notification. That way you'll be notified the moment the next video has been released. As always, you can follow us here on all the socials. We are streaming live now up to seven times a day. We've got two mentors in from the US as well. So we are truly around the clock service now. If you want to take part in that, you can do so. Head over to forexsignals.com. You can take out a seven day free trial, to see what it's all about, engage with us uh, on a one to one basis as well. If that's not your thing, that is not a problem. I'll see you next week. Have a good and safe week.